Experiment three here in general chemistry two involves figuring out the molecular weight using freezing point depression. So anytime you make a solution um, that's adding a solute to a solvent, four things happen. One of those things is the freezing point goes down as opposed to solvent alone. So you'll be measuring that utilizing the solvent of cyclohexane. We're going to add an unknown powder to that cyclohexane. Figuring out the new freezing point. Remember, the freezing point goes down. And then from that calculation, you're going to figure out the molecular weight of the unknown. So that's the purpose of this experiment, measuring the molecular weight of an unknown sample utilizing freezing point depression of cyclohexane. So remember the four collective properties once again. Once you have a solute going to a solvent making a solution. It's freezing point depression, which is the point of this lab. Um, boiling point elevation, you'll have a new vapor pressure, which is much lower than before. And if you have the presence of a membrane, uh, you'll also generate an osmotic pressure. All right, so the first thing here we'll do is fill out our data table. And uh, we're not going to use ring stands. You may have read in your directions the use of ring stands. We actually have this little get-up, which uh, is a little bit more convenient. So here is our test tube. Okay, uh, We're going to measure the empty test tube, the mass of that, with the stopper. All right, so here's our test tube with our stopper. So let's just weigh this here. Okay, this is our setup. We're not going to use a ring stand. And uh, let's tear this. Okay, mass of our cyclo, uh, excuse me, our empty test tube with the stopper. So the mass of the empty test tube and the stopper is 27.92 grams. So let's quickly write that down in our data sheet. 27.92, we'll just go 92 grams. Okay, we got the mass of the test tube with the stopper. And let's skip here over to the mass of cyclohexane. If we go back to our little setup here, all right, so here's our test tube with the stopper. This is just um, the setup. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the stopper here, okay? And um, let's tear it. So I'm going to tear this. So now go ahead and try to get six grams in. So the protocol calls for six grams approximately of cyclohexane. So let's uh, go for six here. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly six, but as close to six as possible would be good. Um, I think I'll stop right there. 6.39 grams. So it's not exactly six, but that's okay as long as I have the data um, in my notebook and in my data sheet, um, I can go ahead and make the calculation. So the mass of the cyclohexane, let's go back here, is going to be 6.39 grams. So I'm going to omit this step because I teared uh, everything and poured the cyclohexane in uh, while the scale was at 0, 0.00. So I really don't need this. Uh, just a way to save some time. And so we're starting off with 6.39 or so grams of cyclohexane. This is our solvent. This is our solvent. And now we're going to add our solute in there and go through our procedure to try to figure out the new freezing point once we add the solute. And from there, our calculations will proceed to trying to get the molecular weight of the unknown. All right, so here's our software that we're going to use to measure our data. So chemistry labs, uh, it's going to be temperature versus time. The title is already given to us here. So make sure you set up the time in minutes from zero to 10. So we already did that in our last lab, how to do that. And the y-axis, uh, the protocol tells us to go from zero to 30 degrees. All right, so now we're ready to measure. So here is our, here's our cyclohexane here. Okay, by itself, we weighed at about 6.4 grams. It's been sitting here, sort of acclimating. So now we're going to dump it in this ice bath, okay? So we got another beaker with some ice and water in there. It's nice and cold. So um, let's take this off and then um, put our temperature probe in. Okay, temperature probe in. It should fit nice and snug. And we will uh, set it down. Okay, now I'm going to hit collect on our green, the green collect button. 
the protocol tells us to do a slight stirring. Okay, so a little bit of stirring here. And we're going to collect this for 600 seconds, which is about 10 minutes or so. You can see here, we're in the ice bath, and um, it's going down. So he started off a little bit above 20 degrees, and it's plummeting, so that's good. Um, every now and then you want to periodically and gently stir uh, with the tip of the probe. So 10 minutes has come up. This is pure cyclohexane. The temperature profile is shown here. And now we got to figure out the uh, freezing point of this pure solvent. So uh, this is very subjective. So uh, the protocol tells us to use the flat part of the curve. So I'm just going to um, imagine the flat part of the curve to be starting from here. So I'm going to um, left click mouse button and then sort of gray that area. Again, yours may be a little bit different than ours. Um, you know, everyone's data is their own. So I've grayed that region where we're not, we will now calculate the average temperature uh, within that plateau region or that flat region. And for that, we're gonna click on stat. Okay, stat right there, statistics. And um, we're gonna look here and measure the mean temperature. Okay, so the average temperature will represent our freezing point from our data of this pure cyclohexane sample. And it's 4.363 degrees. I'll go ahead and write down in our notebook, in my data table, 4.36 degrees as the freezing point of pure cyclohexane. Right, so I noted down uh, the freezing point of pure cyclohexane as 4.36 grams. Now we are done with this part of the experiment. I'll let the thaw. After we thought, we're going to add our unknown. Okay, so let this thaw a little bit. It's got to melt. And now let's go ahead and weigh out our unknown, crushed unknown sample. All right, so here's our unknown. So if you look at your lab manual, they give you the empirical formula. It's C3H2Cl. So here's the unknown. The empirical formula is given to us. Check out page 5 or so of your lab handout. This has already been pre-crushed for you, so we don't need to crush it. Uh, but what we do need to do is weigh out, according to the protocol, about 0.06 grams. So here's our 0.06 grams. It's a very small amount. All right, so 0.06 grams is a very, very tiny, tiny amount. Okay. So you're just going to have to be very um, patient. Okay, this may take a little bit more time because it is such a tiny amount. Um, I overshot it, so let me take a little bit out. Okay. All right, so that's pretty good. 0 0.06, 0 0.05, 0 0.07. Probably this is the environment, the air. Um, let's let it settle. I think 0 0.06 is fine. 0 0.06, 0 0.07. We'll go with 0 0.06. Let's exit out of this. All right, and uh, just click on some white space. So we're going to collect, but we're going to collect over this. So we're not going to um, sort of, we're not going to get a new uh, data sheet. What we're going to do is uh, collect our data alongside this, which is in red, if you remember, was pure cyclohexane alone. So let's go ahead and go back down here. All right, so here is our completely thawed cyclohexane. Sometimes if you want, instead of uh, capping it with the probe, you can cap it with the stopper. So that's something you can do. Maybe it avoids a little bit of the evaporation of the cyclohexane. Remember, this is evaporating, so you always got to be careful with that. And so I'm going to pour in my 0.06 or so grams of our unknown. Okay, all in there. Try to make sure it's solubilized. Some of it may stick to the side of the test tube, so just be careful about that. All right, I'm going to put it in here, our ice bath. All right, let's go here, hit collect, 
All right, so now we're ready to try our sample with the crushed sol solute inside. So we're going to keep our data set here. All right, so this was cyclohexane alone. Here is our solute with our solvent. We got some new ice here, so keep things nice and cold. And um, we're going to put it in. Put it into our ice bath. And when we hit collect, Alright, so our second run here, if you remember, about 0.06 grams of the unknown. And um, in our cyclohexane, you can see the temperature uh, profile from before. And let's let this thaw for a little bit. Uh, the next step here, after we let this thaw, is add an additional, the protocol says about 0.03 grams. So we're going to have 0.03 grams add to this already pre-existing solution. So the total, important point here, the total for mixture two, sample two, or run number two, the total is gonna to be roughly about 0.09 grams. Depends how much we weigh. So let's go ahead and let this thaw, and I'm gonna weigh out about 0.03 grams of the unknown. All right, here is mixture number two. Okay, so here we're gonna to try to aim for about, okay, the key word here is about 0.03 grams. Okay, it's a small amount, so just be careful. Um, 0.05, I think we'll just go with it. Uh, as long as we write what we have in our notebook, 0.06. Actually, no, let's just take some of it out. I think um, it's a little bit too close for my comfort. <laughs> All right, I took some out. Uh, I got 0.03, 0.04. It's fluctuating in that last decimal point. Uh, the balance isn't as accurate uh, as some manufacturer or some balances are. But 0.03, let's go with that. Um, I think the fluctuation is because of air currents, but we're going to say that's 0.03. Let's add it to our sample. All right, our sample has thawed. It already has 0.06 in there. So now let's add our second um, batch here, which is about 0.03. Okay, so 0.03, total of 0.09. Okay, get that in there. So let's put this in here. Right, before we do that, 
um, we are going to click on collect and very important store latest run so that we can get a nice overlay cyclohexane alone in red cyclohexane plus 0.06 of the unknown and now cyclohexane with a total of 0.09 of the unknown so store latest run let's put it in here All right, we got our three graphs here. They look pretty nice. So there's two things that uh, I want to tell you. The first thing is how to get our freezing point. Uh, the second thing is, let's just label these. Let's uh, recollect our memory here. Red is cyclohexane alone. Blue is cyclohexane plus the mixture one, which is 0.06 grams of the unknown. And then green, which is what we just ran, is cyclohexane plus a total of 0.09 or so grams of the unknown. So let's just annotate these or label these. So there's several ways to do that. Go to under data. Let's go to um, data set options. So the latest one was cyclohexane plus mixture two. And we'll just call that cyclohexane. Actually, I'll call it 0.09 grams of unknown. So we got our three graphs here, so let's label them. So let me show you how to label these. So under data, uh, you want to go to data set options. And, um, you know, it's going to be labeled as run one, run two, or your latest. So make sure you know, uh, for example, the red one is pure cyclohexane. So that will be probably run one. And then run two would be the blue. And then the latest would be the green. So. And to show it up as a legend, you're going to go to insert, uh, excuse me, you're going to go to analyze and you're going to go to legend. Okay, so here I remove the legend. You can check it back under analyze and put it back. So now we know what graph amounts to what. All right, now our next point here is to figure out the uh, new freezing points. So let's do the freezing point of cyclohexane plus 0.06 grams of our unknown. So in order to do that, let's just isolate the blue curve here. So to do that, let's go to data and we'll hide the data set. We'll hide the pure one, and then we will hide the data set for the 0.09 grams unknown. We'll do that later. All right, we're, so let's just highlight the plateau or what we consider the plateau region. Okay, so yours may be a little bit different. Everyone's data will be somewhat different. So let's consider that the plateau region. And let's go to stat. And the mean here is about 3.07 or 3.08 degrees C here, the mean. So let's go ahead and write that down as a freezing point of mixture one. And let's do the same thing for our second mixture. So let's get that out of the way. This is mixture two. We can also hide uh, the one that we're not working on. All right, we're gonna highlight what we consider the plateau region where it starts to sort of flatten out, uh, just as we did before to be consistent with the pure cyclohexane. And doing that, um, getting a temperature of about 2.06 degrees or so. So we'll write that down in our data table and um, we'll do our data. Now we can fill out our table. So mixture one, we added uh, another 0.03 grams for mixture two. So the total here is going to be about 0.09 grams. And our freezing point for mixture one, we calculated it by uh, sort of taking a mean average of the plateau region. And we got about 3.07 degrees C. So notice we added 0.06 grams of the unknown and um, our freezing point went down from 4.36 to 3.07. We added an additional 0.03 for a total, for a total of 0.09 degrees. And uh, looking at our da data, um, again, averaging that plateau region towards the end of the graph, the new freezing point of this mixture was about 2.06 degrees C. So here's our data. From here on out, we can calculate the molecular mass of our unknown. They tell us two important things here, the empirical formula of the crushed unknown that we put in. This is our solute. And the actual true molecular formula is this. So uh, can we get this, uh, which is the true formula? If not, how close are we to the C6H4Cl2 actual molecular formula? So in that case, we will calculate a percent error of the molecular mass. 
The goal here is to get the molecular mass of our unknown sol solute. 